I need more because this is the effect of bullying. This is what it's doing. And I want people to know how much it is hurting us as a family. I want people to educate their children. Hey, I don't know if you've uh, heard recently, there was this viral video that was posted by a mother in Australia about her nine-year-old son who uh, is a dwarf and has experienced merciless bullying in his school and in his community. And uh, she has been dealing with this day after day. And so she finally decided to post a video and just explain how traumatic it is for her son to be bullied every day of his life because he's a dwarf and uh, other kids tease him and various things like that. Um, and uh, it's been amazing. The reaction worldwide has been phenomenal. Uh, athletes and celebrities have championed his cause and tweeted about him. Um, one actor, Brad Williams, who's well known for his uh, performance in the Elf movie, who is also a dwarf, uh, started a GoFundMe page for this little boy and raised already over $350,000. It's amazing to see that kind of outpouring of love and support for this little boy and for his mother and family. You know, though, as we see these kinds of stories, as we engage them, as we hear about them, whether they're in our community or across the world, whenever we hear of bullies or mean people or people that are treated unfairly, I mean, it just, from deep within, it, it affects us. It causes us to want to retaliate or defend or uh, bring these bullies to account for what they've done or how they're treating people. But you know, I have a question for you. As painful as these stories are, and as deeply troubling as they are, don't we sometimes struggle ourselves more than we want to admit that we struggle in these very same ways in the way we treat others? Maybe not on the same level, but can we be a bully with our spouse, our friends, our coworkers, our family members, and we treat others in a way that they sometimes feel that they have been treated poorly and unkindly and unlovingly. I'm guessing all of us could probably say yes to that. So, Let's go right to Jesus' words in the Bible. In Matthew chapter 7, it says the following. Let me read it to you. Judge not that you be not judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when there is a log in your own eye. You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. So what is Jesus saying and what is he not saying? I don't think it's fair to say that Jesus is saying we should never judge. No, implicit in what he says is, after you've taken the log out of your own eye, then you will see clearly to be able to help your brother or sister take the splinter or the speck out of their eye. So yes, there is an appropriate place to expose error, to confront bad behavior, to confront immorality, bad theology, or whatever, or bad behavior. We have to do that. As Christians, we speak lovingly and kindly to those that are in error with the hope of helping them uh, be restored to a faithful Christian walk with, with Jesus. But there are many ways in which you and I, not because we're bullying a child, which is such a visceral and terrible thing when we see it or hear about it, but in some ways we can be kind of like a bully ourselves in the way that we treat people, uh, maybe when we disagree with them, uh, maybe when um, we, uh, we think we're right and they're wrong, or politically speaking, we disagree with their point of view, or Theologically speaking, we disagree with their conviction and we uh, make them to feel stupid or we, we, we put them down or we, we are smug to them about the fact that they believe certain things or, or have certain positions. And that's a kind of form of theological bullying or uh, spiritual bullying, if you will. And that kind of stuff has run rampant in the church 
for a long time, uh, judgmental churches and very uh, pride-filled churches do exist where people are always checking in on one another's behavior, not necessarily looking at the log in their own eye, but in the specks of their brothers and sisters' eyes. And that's a problem. That is a problem. And as we deal with this kind of question, that's why Jesus wants us to be introspective, to say to ourselves first, where am I falling short? Where do I need to be corrected? And once I've done that, how can I help then my brother or sister in loving, gracious ways to restore them to faith? So what should we do? Well, I have some suggestions. Uh, let's consider these three words that all begin with R to help us as we think about how we behave when we're dealing with our own issues. First of all, we need to reflect. We need to reflect on the way we're thinking, the way we're um, behaving, the way we're responding to somebody else. We have to reflect and pray and think through at a personal level, how come I'm responding this way to this person? And that involves asking the Holy Spirit, hey, God, help me understand why I'm struggling with this. So before you respond, reflect. Secondly, we need to review the situation. And that usually involves getting advice and counsel from trusted friends. Sometimes we can talk to people who agree with us and say, yeah, that guy's terrible and you have a right to react that way and you have a right to be angry and you have a right to, to go sock it to them and, and take them down or go tell people. And, and sometimes people just agree with us and we just want to hear what they say because we know they're going to agree with us. I'm not talking about reviewing with those kind of people. I'm not also talking about those who are always critical and quick to put you down and challenge you and tell you you're wrong because that's not fair either. But try to find a friend who truly will support you and encourage you, but also think with you about whether your reaction or response to a particular situation is the way Jesus would want you to behave and act. That's the key, is to get counsel from a loving, trusted friend. Then finally, we need to respond. We need to reflect, we need to review, then we need to respond. And that means we need to change our behavior. We have to think about this stuff and then decide to behave differently. Sometimes it's important to walk away from a conflict and let it go. Sometimes it's important to engage and keep the conversation going, but making sure that we're not getting angry, that we're not putting someone down, that we're not bullying them with our, our uh, uh, feeling superior to them, but treating them with honor and respect, we need to engage them over the issues that we need to deal with them about so that we can come to a solution where both of us feel good about the experience, where both of us feel that we've been listened to, and even if we haven't come to agreement, at least we have shown each other love and respect. And this is the way that we can truly love our neighbor, our brother and sister. Take that log out of your eye, and then you'll be able to take the speck out of your brother's eye.